Today I'm very excited because my guest is a writer, a comedian. You've seen him on the on the Tonight Show. Uh, he headlines clubs all across the country when he's not writing for your favorite TV shows. Ladies and gentlemen, check it out. It's my guy Jordan Fisher. What's up, y'all? How you doing? Doing great. Now I have to ask you because I took like it took an hour to get here from the Upper East Side. <laughs> yeah. It was right off the queue. It's not a big deal. Right. But I was just on TikTok, and you know what I was just watching? Hmm. Did you see that boat fight? Oh yeah, I, I actually cool. looked it up probably about an hour ago because I didn't know what was going on. I would see like uh, little stills of it. Yeah, I so. couldn't watch. I, so if you don't know, in Alabama, in Montgomery, Alabama, which is probably one of like, it was like the head of the slave trade pretty much. Yeah. There was a uh, very probably race relations, <laughs> tensions yeah. type. Uh, so there was like a black security guard uh -huh. who was telling these people parking a pontoon boat that you can't park there. They parked there and he like moved it and they came and were like, hey, what are you doing? Right. Started fighting the guy. Then people on another boat saw what was happening yeah. and came to his defense and the police were there, but on the side of the black guy, which is amazing. Yeah, right, right. The first like... time in a long time that the police have been on our side. Woo! Um, yeah, I, I didn't even did you see, see like the full ending like that. I, this is... I saw the fight start, and the security guard throws his yes. hat up. And that was and like the like, calling card, yeah, right? It was like, here we go. Yeah, I loved it. It's like, it, as a white person, it's fun to kind of watch white people get beat up because, like, we deserve it. We've done enough stupid shit throughout the years, you yeah, know what I mean? Right. But, I mean, this family, obviously. Yeah, I mean, was, they, they were tripping. Yeah, they were tripping. They were. Yeah, yeah. Not great. But then the guy took a folding chair. Did you see that part? No, I didn't see it get to the WWE part. Oh, yeah. There was like a like a plastic, not a metal one, but those like plastic folding chairs. Uh -huh. And just, just like went full WWE on them. It was amazing. Holy crap. No, I, I got to find the yeah. director's cut of this because I only saw like the, you know, like the news version of oh, it. Oh, I think there's going to be like a Vice, there's got to be a Vice documentary made on this. Uh, yeah. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, I don't like when anyone gets beaten up, white or black. Right. I don't think violence is the answer, so don't try to quote me on that, but... I was just saying, it's kind of validating. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, you start beating, jumping on the security guard for doing his job, then, you know, yeah. you got problems. You got to call in the Avengers and take the care of all that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I love it. It was so good. So we are in, Pros we're in like Prospect Park area, yeah, yeah. Brooklyn, Flatbush. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. Prospect Park's right there. Cool. You're so close to the park. Yeah, yeah. And do, you, do you passing. go here a lot? Oh, I love this. Yeah, I go here all the time. Sometimes I'll rent uh, one of these city bikes right here. Yeah. And just kind of ride through the park. I've been wanting to buy a bike. So oh, yeah? I don't have to do but that. why? Yeah. With, you got a city bike right uh, yeah but i don't have like the subscription of city bike and city uh, bikes are you know they're communal and they sometimes work sometimes don't so yeah, it's like true. i want to get like a legit bike that i can you know just do cardio on and yeah take it around the loop oh uh, so i was thinking when you were saying you're gonna buy a bike you were gonna buy like an e-bike no because no, that's no, what no. i would do no no i mean that would be nice but yeah you know i i want to do it just more for just like exercise exercise and relaxing. Uh, yeah. yeah yeah that's good that's good yeah so I was doing a little bit of research, uh -huh. and you started comedy at the age of 17 to avoid a funeral, is that correct? Well, my family owns a funeral business. What? Yeah, we own a funeral home. Wow. So, um, yeah, it was it's just like, like... It's like, um, what's that movie with my girl? Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, so we just like, you know, my granddad owned the business and ran it with like my uncles and everything, um, and that was just never for me, really. So mm -hmm. like I've, you know, grown up around death you know like all my life wow so i kind of always knew it was like a concept of or you know a part of life yeah you know because I, when i was a kid i would like go to my uh family's funeral home and you know with my granddad while he was working and i'd sit in like the waiting area and there'd just be like you know somebody for a viewing like laid out in a casket and you know but you're seeing that at like five years old yeah dead, wow dead person right do there. you think that did something to you did it take like a kind of like the sting off of dying there a little bit or make it a less uh terrifying? i don't know if it did you know i still you know enjoy being very much alive yeah me um, too me too but uh yeah it just kind of it just kind of lets you know like oh this is it you know wow. eventually some 55 year old dude's gonna dress you when you're dead and put you in a box so that's, yeah that's crazy yeah it's uh but yeah, I mean, like, part of my family does that, and my dad never did it either. Okay, my so dad's also, was it a family business? Yeah, yeah, so like... Like passed you know, down? Yeah, my granddad uh, owned it and started it. Okay. And uh, he did it with his brother, 
so my uncle, and then um, also my uh, my other uncle, so my my granddad's uh, son. That's only like four years older than me. Wow, oh, cool. One of my that's, uncles that's, is only four years dude, older than me. Dude, that's wild. I love that. Yeah. So so uh, <laughs> he he does it a lot now. Uh-huh. So um, yeah. So it's still in the family. But what's it called? Can we shout it out? Just Fisher Funeral Home. Fisher. Oh, that sounds yeah. good. Rolls two F. Rolls, <laughs> yeah, off, rolls yeah, off the yeah. tongue. Yeah. Um, but did anything ever like scare you when you see that? Like, um, yeah, maybe if you saw like someone your age in a casket or something. Oh, like, I never did you ever... saw any of that. Thank God. Oh, okay. Because yeah. that might be a little yeah, too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never saw anything, a little jarring. anything like that. But you know, um, it's not like I was there every day. It's oh, just, okay. It's just one of those things where it was just part of the family. Wow. And um, you know, I would just have to go hang out there sometimes when my granddad was watching me. You yeah. Know, growing up. Sure. And, and uh, you know, just have to hang out at the funeral home for a little bit while I was playing my Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Dead body laying in the corner wow. with gospel music playing in the background. Dang. You know? I used to live in Harlem. Yeah. And I would walk by this church and sometimes they would have funerals going on with an open casket. Yeah. And I would just be like on my way to the train, going to a spot. Right. I look to my left and see just like a dead body. Yeah. And that was always to me a little like, ooh, like Right. I'll go through here. Especially when you're not Expecting to see it, right? It can be a little. Yeah, it can be a it little. Can take you back a little a jarring second. for a second. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Here's the park, man. Wow. Um, Do you know what this white building behind us is? Was? Um, it looks like a nice like pavilion. Yeah. At one point. I don't know. It's just like a little hangout pavilion that people will post stuff in and either have like. Sometimes you'll see them doing like small little shows. Oh. Cool. Or like barbecuing or whatever. Um, and if you if you've never been to Brooklyn, any venue, some weird. Brooklyn artists will put a show on. Yes. In like anything is, no yeah. no place is off the limits. Yeah, I've seen like some kind of to... weird rehearsals going on in there. Or yeah. Whatever seances, you know. Oh wow. Get, get the crops harvested right, you uh-huh. know, in the back. <laughs> last time I was in Prospect Park, <laughs> the crops harvested. <laughs> last time, yeah. last time I was in this park, I was doing um, the half marathon, the Brooklyn half. Oh really? Well, it was it started in Brooklyn, but then it ended in Manhattan. Yeah. Oh, I always dude. have to tell people that. I could never. Because I, could, I can't. I, do like the it's marathon. the farthest I've ever ran. I'll never do it again. Yeah. No. Do Do you still run? Yeah, I run every day, but I just like can't do. That was 13 miles. It's ridiculous. It's way. It's like for what? What are we doing? Like we. I mean, marathons. Well, I, I commend people for doing them. Like I'm like, you guys are impressive. Yeah. To be able to do it. Yeah. That shit was created like thousands of years ago, and the dude died. Who did right. Well, yeah. He died at the uh, end. Yeah, that's true. It should, have, did, it should uh, be a fable, like, hey, don't do this anymore. Isn't that, he died, and then isn't that why it's as long as it is? Because he did, yeah. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, it's 26.2 miles, the, the original, like the full yeah. marathon. Right? Yeah, full one. Yeah, but like, yeah, the guy, what, what was he doing? Delivering I, a message? It was like an old like, Postmates yeah, worker or yeah, something. Yeah, something right? like that. It was like the original DoorDash. I'm sure someone in the comments will let us know. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's wild. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I... I, w- I did it to raise money for prostate cancer. There you go. But so that was like a good reason. Yeah. But I still, I was like, Jesus. Yeah, that's a good reason. It but was I wild. mean, I can't. I'd be like, can't we just do the GoFundMe? I don't want to run here. Just take the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, why would I got to run for that? I know. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. GoFundMe's are like the lazy way of doing it. Like, yeah. Come on, you're not even gonna run for it yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'll do an Uber pool for charity. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So you. So how did you start getting into comedy then? Because um, I've read that you like skipped a funeral or something. No, no, I just okay. sk- I skipped working for the funeral. Business. Oh, that's, that's, I see. Maybe that's, that's what really it was. was. I just didn't want to go into okay. go into that. Yeah, um, completely different. Yeah, completely job. different trajectory of you know life. And was was your family supportive of that decision? Yeah, but they were very shocked. You know, the first time I said that I wanted to do it, that it was like very unexpected because. I wasn't funny at home. Mm-hmm. Like I was pretty quiet, reserved, you know, shy or whatever. But at school, I would be funny. Mm-hmm. I was never a class clown. I wasn't like that dick yeah. head kid that was just trying to like be, uh, you, you know, attention all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, just like yeah. create interruptions or anything like that. Like if I said something, it would make the teacher laugh as well. Oh, that's so you waited for like to be the golden yes. opportunity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I mean, my dad showed me like. Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor when I was like nine. Wow, that's yeah. a good age to be exposed to that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could be a little. Yeah, like we're talking like, you well, know. Well, I guess you were exposed Murphy to dead his... bodies too very yeah, early exactly. on. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I've seen enough. So what shocks you now? Ooh, um, I'd say like pretty much, I think 
stuff on Twitter and social media and everything like that, <laughs> yeah. like just like the fight that we were talking about before. <laughs> right, right. Like I think stuff like that, where it's just so easy. The internet's so easy, where you can just witness somebody uh -huh. die, Ooh. like in a video, and then scroll right past, and the next thing is like a jalapeno popper recipe. Yeah, and you're just like, how the fuck did we get from this right, to that? Like, right. And you just go on about your day, where you're yeah. just sucking in you don't even like the video of the guy that died yeah just yeah exactly it's just like just wild instance after wild instance and then you know padded with like dances and dogs and stuff like that cooking recipes yeah and yeah but um yeah i mean i started when i was 17. that's young i think yeah yeah it was pretty young. i mean i was the only person doing were you even it. allowed in the clubs yeah, so my mom would take me to the open mics. That's so cool. Yeah, she would drive me to the open mics. I didn't even have my driver's license at the time. And she'd wait in the car, but she'd come in no, with you? No, no, she would watch. Oh, she would that's come awesome. In with me. Yeah, she would watch. Like, my first open mic, you know, because it was a bringer. So, oh, yeah. you know, I didn't realize what a bringer was uh -huh. at the time. So I started at the Greensboro Comedy Zone. And, you know, you had to bring five people with you to get on stage. Uh -huh. But for a high schooler, that's nothing. Right. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, I got five friends I want to see yeah, do easy, stand up, whatever. Easy. But also, that club was like pretty popular because the house MC there was uh, was popular. This guy named Chris Wiles. So people would come to see him on the weekends, but he would also host the mic on the oh, Thursday, so they would come to see him. So we would have like a legit show for the open mic. It'd be like 150 people in there. Wow. So like my first that's great. My first time on stage was like a real show that's more people than come to like pro shows we do <laughs> honestly like, you know like yeah, in yeah. brooklyn or in Manhattan exactly sometimes. yeah wow. so you know i went up there in front of like my mom and my english teacher and you know my friends and all that kind of stuff but yeah 17 and then we had to do uh, i was a ri rising senior in high school so we had to do a senior project what does a rising senior mean like meaning i was going from junior year to senior year oh okay. yeah, yeah. I got you, so got you. so um we had to do a senior project that year and the senior project had to be something kind of like career focused uh -huh. you know you have to make a trifold board and write a paper and come up with a product and all that kind of stuff so i was like all right well i'll just do stand up yeah and that way the project can actually be fun yeah that's and smart. i actually get to do stand up as well so did that and like made my first like tape a dvd back in the, yeah back in the day and uh yeah i just kept kept going after that because you know, you're 17, you don't know what the hell you want to do with your life. But after I went on stage, I was like, oh, this is it. Oh, wow. It was like kind of a moment of clarity. I kind of knew early on as well. Yeah. Do you remember the first joke you ever told? Uh, or like some, on stage? Something, something about like, it was some 17 year old stuff, like talking about morning wood and hard ons and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, That's uh, yeah. That's good. Do you remember it? Not really. Right. No. <laughs> it's been a long time, dude. Like, do you have a tape of that first open mic you did? I probably have it somewhere. That'd be fun to watch, my, wouldn't it? On my laptop, yeah. To have a nice dose of cringe for myself. It's so cringy to watch, uh, like, like so you, you, like, clip a lot of stuff. Yeah. And it, I do too. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's part of the game now. Yeah. But it is very cringy to go back and watching sets, even from, like, two weeks ago. Right, yeah. You see things like, oh, why did I do that? Yeah. Why does my voice sound so weird? Yeah, or, like, just, you know, you've made the joke better. Yeah. And oh, yeah. you're like, oh, why did I... Why did I post that? I have a yeah, better yeah, version yeah, of the I same... You know. Much better version of it now. So, yeah. It's, it's an ever-growing, you know, art form. So you always have to kind of adjust. What is the ultimate comic challenge? Oh, that was a local competition uh, back in North Carolina, where I'm from. So, uh, basically, this local club ran a challenge for comics, basically. It was just like a tournament style, same way they have like the March Madness and everything up yeah. here in New York. And uh, it was like the first time I got a thousand dollars doing comedy. A thousand bucks? Yeah, yeah. Hell the yeah. Pri the prize money was a thousand bucks. And you won it twice? Yeah, yeah, back to back. And then the third year, I didn't want to do it the third year. And the club wanted me to do it, and I was like, all right, whatever. And I didn't win the third year, and I was like, all right, I got to move. Yeah, <laughs> so then you moved to New York? Let's go this way. Yeah, yeah. Did you go to college? Yeah, yeah, I graduated. Oh, I, did yeah. you go to school in the city? Uh, no, I went to school in North Carolina. So I was doing comedy, you know, while in college, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Um, and I didn't move until I was 25, so probably like, what, two, uh, three years after I graduated college? Yeah, what did you go to school for? Sports med. Oh wow, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah, I got a degree in kinesiology, which wow. I'll never use. Well, <laughs> hopefully, this is a cute little pond. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice park. It's very There's nice. There's turtles always hanging out in there. Yeah, 
See if we can get some of the turtles. Yeah, yeah, there's big ones. Wow, there's a lot. Yeah, Donnie, Raph. Dang. Right? That is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a good place. Prospect Port? Yeah, man. You ever eat turtle stew? Turtle I've soup? I've never had turtle soup. Maybe next time I go to like New Orleans or something, I'll oh, try yeah. to get some. I feel yeah. like they have it there. I don't think I would want to. I don't want to. I don't even want to know what turtle tastes like, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Have you had uh, alligator? No. I'm it's pretty unadventurous when it comes to eating. Alligator's good. I like, uh, is it really? Yeah. I like, if like, I like foods that like an eight year old likes. Uh, are you a chicken fingers and macaroni and cheese kind of guy? Mac and cheese, yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a vegetarian. Okay, there you but go. But like pizza. Yeah. Pizza's like my favorite. I could eat pizza every day. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can do every day. I can do it. At least, you can. I, can, I can do it twice a week. Yeah, like on the roads, tough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I try to eat. I try to eat healthy too, and that never works well on the road. Yeah, that's hard. It's Panera, hard on the road. Salads, Chipotle. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. It's pretty tough on the road. Although, so I'm, you moved to New York, and mm -hmm. then did you move here with a job? Yeah. So I used to work at this company called Fastenal, um, which is just like a industrial supply chain. Oh, so, wow. you know, hardware fucking ladders and screws, nuts, bolts, all that. Wow. Um, and I worked there like in the warehouse, just doing manual labor for yeah. years and years. And then at 24, I broke my leg uh, going to a trampoline park. And Was this on your birthday? This was on my birthday. I heard about this. Yeah, broke my leg at a trampoline park. Um, it came, Where did you break your leg? Uh, like like on my body? Yeah, you like on your femur? Like oh what part? yeah, tib fib, so wow. tibial and tibia. And, uh, or tibia and fibula, and um, it Yikes. came out. Whoa! Yeah, the bone came out. Nah. Bone. And so Dude, now, that's crazy. Yeah, I've got like a rod and screws and plates and stuff all in there now. Wow. My bionic leg. Wow. And, um, Did you ever go back to a trampoline park? Hell no, I, I make sure people don't go to them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I stand on the rooftops of them like Batman, <laughs> and I swoop down and push what? children so out of the way So your bone came out of your leg? Mm-hmm. Yep, it was it was like, like sticking uh, right out. I could see it. Oh my god! And then so the ambulance came, took you to the hospital, or do your friends drive you? Oh what, no, what the ambulance came, took me to the hospital, and you know had to. Were you like you don't drink, right? Or do you mm -hmm. drink? Not really. No, so like no drugs were involved. No, no. Wow. Yeah. So just they're scary trampolines. Crazy. Yeah, it was it was terrible. But I was still working at that job there, and I transferred to the HR department once I got like healed up. And then got a job transfer up to New York for the same company, just working in the store. And it was depressing, dude. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, because, you know, I had been working there for however many years, like seven or eight years or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doing comedy the entire time, just trying to figure out, like, how do you transition from having a day job to just being a full-time comedian? Yeah. Like, you know, living out your dreams. And every everyone's path is different, too. Mm -hmm. So there's not, like, one cut and dry answer to that. Exactly. Yeah. So... I ended up uh, finally getting like a college agent. Oh, good. Who are you with? Uh, I was with uh, this place called The College Agency. Oh, yeah. And then, I was with them too. Yeah, yeah. They kind of suck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, I was with them. And then they, uh, so they got me my first, you know, and you know, getting college yeah. gig money, you're like, oh, shit. Like, it feels good. Yeah, you're like real money. Yeah. So I got with them and they got me some bookings or whatever. And I quit my job. Uh, but I quit like around, I don't know, February or March uh -huh. and then the school semester ends Yeah. and then you think to yourself, oh shit, that's right. There's no yeah. school in yeah. the summer. <laughs> there's no, no yeah. college work in the summer. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, now I don't have any income. So then I started walking dogs in the city for a there little bit. There you go. That's not bad. Yeah. And then I got my first writing job and that's when I was able to finally be like full time, like <sighs> You know, working. Where was it. the writing job? So it was for this uh, show called Fifty Central. It was a, oh on BET. Yeah, it was on BET. It was a uh, it was a uh, sketch show hosted by Fifty Cent. That was very short lived, but it gave me full financial stability. That's amazing. Time, you know? And then you probably were you part of the um, the like SAG yeah. or uh, yeah, yeah. WAG? What yeah, do you call WGA. It? I was WGA, part of the Writers that's Guild. It. Um, that was like how I got into the Writers Guild and everything got health insurance. Wow, which, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was, you know, life changing. What what are your what are your thoughts I have to ask you on the strike going on? <clears throat> I mean it's kinda necessary, you know? Like yeah. they're not paying us and the, you know they've already lost way more 
money than we were asking for to begin with. Right. Um, but yeah, it's like you got to pay these writers, you got to pay these actors. You know, they work very hard, and these companies are only going to get, you know, the earnings and revenues that they get with us. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can try to depend on AI and all that bullshit as much as you want to, but mm -hmm. it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. And then, you know, these people are making millions and billions of dollars off of this work that, you know, we make. And then we're not seeing the percentage that's fair to us in return. So yeah. it, it just needs to be done until, you know, they can come up with an agreement. And when you see what the writers are asking for, it's a very small sliver of, yeah. of yeah. the company's <laughs> earnings. They would not even have to change they would, anything. They wouldn't feel a single they thing. They wouldn't feel it. They wouldn't feel a thing. But, I, you know, I don't think it's going to get resolved anytime soon. I mean, hopefully it gets resolved this year. But, you know, right now it's the summer. So these rich people are like, all right, we all have fun striking in the heat. We're going to go right. hang out on our yachts right. and all that. Uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, they want to enjoy their summer too. Yeah. Do you, does AI scare you? And like, not, not just in yes. terms of writing, but just in general? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Now, like... I've I've tried it out like for like certain little things say I'm like editing a clip or mm -hmm. whatever you know anything can be used uh, you know if you use it the right way right um, but yeah just overall what some of it can do mm -hmm. and like what people will use it for or like you know use against somebody I'm like man this yeah. is kind of terrifying like yeah how, how well this works yeah, I don't really know too much about it to speak on it intelligently, but what I've mm -hmm. seen, it, it does seem like it, it can, from what we've seen, they're probably only showing us a little bit of what they're capable of doing anyways. Yeah, we, we have the public version of AI. Right, yeah, who we knows, don't even know. Who knows what they have. <laughs> like, yeah. I wonder if you could just say, like, create a whole Family Guy episode and they just, like, create one. I don't know. Like, I don't know how uh, easy it is to do anything like that. I'm not sure. Maybe. Apparently, like, the paid version is, like, pretty incredible what what it can do like the chat uh chat gbt and all that kind yeah. of stuff like yeah the paid version you know Dang. It, can, it can do some wild shit i don't even pay for youtube i have to watch ads oh so. man I, I use my friends i just That's got kicked, i just got kicked off netflix oh why well because you know they started doing the password oh crackdown, yeah so you yeah. have to be in the same household to do it so mine mine finally came through dang so i got to Got to get out here, get another writing gig, so I can. That's right. Yeah, Netflix is not. I can pay for Netflix. Yeah, man, that whole like I watch like videos and people talk about their whole structure. On paper, looks great, but they're not letting people know how many people are watching right. the shows, and that's a huge problem. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's all bullshit. Yeah, truly, man, it's crazy. And there's UFOs and aliens now, and no one's talking about it. It's so funny because the government was always like, "There's no aliens, no UFOs." Yeah, and then people were like, "Yes, there is." And the government's like, actually, there are. And then they're like, and we're like, no, it's not. Well, it's a last ditch effort on the government. The government always decides to tell us there's aliens or whatever when things are going bad. Mm -hmm. So when we're, mm -hmm. ever, when we're getting loud, like, what's up with inflation and all these prices right. and why we can't afford to live here? They're like, hey, 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 <laughs> so I look, hear you, but you know we have aliens. <laughs> look right? up in the sky. They're like, no, don't, don't look down yeah, here. Don't yeah, look up. Yeah. Look up. Yeah. It's like, oh, nobody gives it. Like, the millennials have gone through too much to give a shit about aliens right now. One, we always expected it anyway. Right. But like all the things that we've seen in our lifetime between 9-11 and, you know, pandemics and mm -hmm. different presidencies and the internet and yada yada, you know, with them saying, oh, we have aliens. We're like, okay, well, do they have ice? Cause it's hot. Like mm -hmm. this whole world is melting and right. where are they gonna live? Cause we can't afford to be here. So I know they can't afford to be exactly. here. Exactly. So it's wild. Let's get to the light and then we can turn back. Yeah. It's getting hot, dude. It is. I should not have worn jeans today. Oh, yeah. You made a mistake, bro. I, I just realized this. I did. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. not in my best walkie, ta talkie, yeah. talkie, walkie. Uh, yeah. I can't even speak. Outfit, but. Yeah. It feels it's, good to be outside, though. Yeah. It's just muggy. That's it's all. It's muggy, humid, I'm sweating. Yeah. Woo. I'm working for it. I'm yeah. working for it. So, yeah, hopefully the strike will be over this year. I, I was, I, I always hear people be like, oh, Christmas. It'll be done. No, my Christmas. But right. now. No, I'm hearing spring 2024. Who knows? That might be true, though, because, like, the thing is, the whole business kind of goes uh, cold, no pun intended, around yeah. Christmas. Like, after true. Thanksgiving, Hollywood doesn't want to do anything. They're yeah. like, all right, we're... Uh, you think, like, the Senate takes a lot of breaks? <laughs> right, yeah. Or Congress. Yeah. It is Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Like, after, after uh, you know, when the holidays come around, they're like, all right, we're going to go home to our families and all that kind of stuff yeah. and, and chill. 
Um, big turnaround. Um, and uh, yeah, so it might be spring 2024. Wow. I didn't even think about the, that, that yeah. aspect of the Now, were you writing August. on the show when the strike happened? No, I wasn't. I was uh, in the process of trying to sell one. Yeah. And then, you know, also you're always like submitting to write for shows and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, I had submitted some packets and things that I was proud of mm -hmm. um, and was hoping to hear back from her. Uh, but what, is, what shows have you written on besides the um, the sketch show with 50 Cent? Uh, the Tonight Show. That was the, That's so, a good one. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote for uh, that show and the Tonight Show and then like a couple other like smaller like uh, reality shows because mm -hmm. surprise reality shows are not real. Yeah. Um, what? You know, they take they take writers that come up with these ideas for these. What was it like working on the Tonight Show? Uh, it was good. It's a uh, man. It's like being thrown in the fire because it was something I wasn't expecting to do at all. Yeah. You know, because it wasn't like my dream to come up here and be a writer. Right. Um, writing just kind of happened for me. A lot of people, though, like you know, like that routine. Yeah. And that health insurance and that paycheck, and then you can go do spots at night. For sure. There's some comics where it's like that's their dream is to become a writer. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, like I want to move here or whatever. Like, you know, get my stand up popping, and then yeah. and then I want to write. I love. But it. that was like never even like on my radar. Of things to do it wasn't until i got like my first management that they were like do you want to submit a packet to write for late night and i was like what is that <laughs> and uh so yeah so um but the tonight show was good jimmy was cool you know yeah i think it helped that i performed on the show yeah and you know the the set went well enough that they you know you got a standing in. ovation yeah yeah I got that's amazing ovation. dude and you know went well enough that they considered me to write for the show and brought me in um, but yeah, I used to sit next to Jimmy like every day yeah. during the, uh, like rehearsals and monologue, like meetings and all that kind of stuff. But it becomes like clear that in these, these environments for this show, there is a hierarchy to it. Oh, of course. It's not just so much, you know, I wrote a joke and it's gonna get on TV. There's three guys that kind of put together the monologue itself mm -hmm. um, and they're gonna put their jokes as priority above anybody else's because you know they want their jobs to stay secure right right so uh, so then after that it's just whoever else falls into place like after after they get their three uh, prioritized right you know things going on then it's like the rest of us writers are like, okay, well now we'll pick one from here, one from here, you know, maybe one from here. And then does Jimmy Fallon or the rest of the staff know whose jokes made it into the monologue? Yeah, yeah, they do. Like, so it's kind of like, competitive. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy definitely, he definitely knows. I mean, I'm not sure he's like keeping tabs on it every day. Right. But, you know, he reads those jokes. Oh, so he reads the jokes you write when to submit for the monologue? Yeah, so... And does he have any say in what gets in? Yeah, he definitely will. So, like, you know, he'll... We'll um, write a batch of them and submit them to him or whatever, and then he'll kind of pick from those. So it's like, you know, he, he'll sometimes directly pick, like, oh, this was Jordan's joke or, you know, Marcus's joke or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick this one and this one, and then so on and so forth. So it's kind of nerve-wracking in that sense because you're sending your, your creative work directly to the boss and hoping that they uh they like it and every day is just kind of a, a test of you know are you worthy of being here really? right yeah because, that seems terrifying yeah 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 it's like you hope to get a joke on every day or like you know getting one joke on yeah is a big relief yeah i bet like if you have a joke on that gets on a monday mm -hmm. and it's a good joke you're probably like can breathe a sigh of relief for the yeah. rest of the week, right? Yeah, but still, it's like, all right, well, if I don't get one on Tuesday, I better get one on Wednesday. Ah, you know? okay. So what was, like, how many jokes a week would you get on, You would you say? I don't know. It varied. Oh, sometimes okay. it'd be like, all right, I got, you know, because you're also, on this week. Uh, sometimes it's like, I got one on this week, and you're yeah. like, shit. <laughs> you also have to remember you're not writing for your voice. Right. You're writing for Jimmy Fallon's voice. Right, which is tough because, you know, he's a guy that doesn't want to ruffle any feathers. Yeah. At the time... When I was working there, it was, you know, it was uh, it was a lot going on in the world. Was was this 2016? This was no no no. This was uh, after that. This oh, was, okay. Uh, 2018, 2019, or something okay. like that. So, so you know, there's a lot going on during that time. Absolutely. And 
He seems to be leaning, like he was very moderate. Yeah. But he, now he seems to lean a little bit more left. Yeah, yeah. He used to be, you know, because his whole thing is like, I just want to, you know, make people smile and laugh before they go to bed, which yeah. is totally fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's why I was a big fan of him before, you know, I started working there. And yeah. not, not that I'm not a fan of him now, but of course, just when I was growing up and watching any late night, I'd be like, oh, yeah, this is just a fun time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when things, you know, when, the, you know, everything, when all the news got so crazy like it did, it's hard not to at least address some of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Especially when you have, I mean, when you have advertisers yeah. too, you have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there would be times where it's like, okay, this is obvious, obviously the story we're going to talk about today. This mm -hmm. thing happened in the White House and I indictment, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then we come here and write jokes about it. And then we wouldn't say anything about it really, or like only touch on it like for a half a second. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, well, why am I writing about the new chalupa at Taco Bell? <laughs> like, I don't give a shit about that. Like, There's a new chalupa? <laughs> right, right. Dang. Okay. Is this the one that comes with the side of queso? <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, so okay. it was just, it's very, um, it's very tough because you're just kind of, you're kind of on your own to figure out what direction you should be riding in. Got you're kind of just like throwing darts at the board and hoping whatever it is sticks. So the Jimmy Fallon job, did that end during the pandemic? Um, shortly before, I feel like. I worked there for about a year. Okay, that, yeah. and, and a lot of times writers won't stay at these jobs yeah. for too long because they yeah. like to get in fresh writers and right. also a lot of writers get yeah. uh, burnt out so exactly. fast from a gig like that. Yeah, there's that. And then, you know, there's some people that it's like, that's what they do for their life. You right, know? Like right. some people get in and it's like, they've been there since late night with Jimmy Fallon. They've been there 10, 12 years yeah. or whatever and it's like that's what they're gonna do mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. but you know especially for like stand-up comics there's a lot of us that get in you know do anywhere from three months to a year and it's like all right i did that mm -hmm, <laughs> then mm -hmm. you move on when you were writing these monologue jokes did your stand-up kind of reflect what you were kind of working on or did you or did you ever use any of your monologue jokes that fallon didn't take and put in uh, your act yeah there was there was definitely a few um just because like yeah, there were some things I knew like Jimmy wouldn't be able to touch or right. say or yeah. do, yeah. Or, and uh, I would write them still and submit them. But you know, I would look at them. And I'm like, man, these are still good jokes. Yeah, and uh, I'd go tell them myself, and some mm -hmm. of them ended up in the act. That's so cool. Yeah. Now, would your family, when you ever had a joke that made it in, because this is what I would do. I would call my parents, tell everyone <laughs> I knew, listen for this joke. <laughs> I wrote it. It's in the monologue. No. Um, it's so funny because, like, that time's a blur now. I feel like um, they definitely would check for that or they'd ask. Oh, I see. Um, but it's not like I'd have, it's not like I'd be like, oh, watch tonight because this mm -hmm. joke made it in or anything. There yeah. is. There, like you know, he used to do the thank you notes. Yes, around there. That was like my favorite. Yeah, because uh, I, I love that one-liner style. Of, yeah, yeah. The thank you notes writing, were yeah. like so fun. I enjoyed writing those, honestly, and like seeing those get on made me, you know, I enjoyed like getting those on yeah. almost more than anything else. Yeah, because that like those were so good. Yeah, because I was such a fan of that like as a kid. Yeah. So like being able to write something and get them on, I was like, yeah. Got, got a good thank you note on. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you notes. Yeah. Would you ever watch the tapings of the show? Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, yeah. Like, so the tapings start at five. So, and that's, you know, basically when the work day would end. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would stick around for a little bit and watch the tapings, or especially if there was somebody on that I was excited to see. Oh, yeah. You know. Did you ever meet anyone pretty cool that you were a big that's fan of? That's the thing. We couldn't, like, meet people. Really? Yeah. We couldn't go up and meet them. Ah. Sometimes I'd, you know, walk through the hallway and like see somebody like I like fist bump Anderson Pack or whatever. Oh that's like, sick. But you know I would see people for sure but it's like you can't go out your way to be like hey I'm a big fan or like take a picture or anything like that unless you're like working with them directly on like some type of piece. Oh, you're not gonna really be able to like. And people kind of st like stick to that like. Oh yeah because people want their job and their health uh, okay. insurance. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true that's true. Yeah it's like you don't want to get fired just because you really wanted a picture with The Rock. Right right. <laughs> I mean The Rock could be worth it. Yeah he was there. I saw him there. Dang big yeah. dude I bet. Big dude yeah the, all of that because uh, I remember when I was there this was. Oh uh, yeah because you're a wrestling fan yeah, too. Yeah. We both we both love wrestling. Yeah one of the years it was uh, the year they were um had mania at MetLife. Oh, so the uh, Roman Reigns was there, right? Yeah, it was Taker. everybody. It was like Drew. Yeah. It was uh, Seth, and I want to say Alexa might have been there. And, 
and uh, Carmela. Shout and, like, out to Lexi. Yeah, and like it was a bunch of people that came through. Like seeing Drew in person, I was like, dude, he's a big he's, hell. Wow. Yeah, but it was dope, like being able to see that kind of stuff in person, you know? That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. Or see like, you know, people's late night like performances too. Oh, other com comedian friends other, of yours. Other comedians yeah. was dope. Like seeing musicians that, you know, I wouldn't have seen otherwise. Mm -hmm. Or like seeing like a musician's like late night debut as well, where you're like, oh, this person is about to be a star. Wow. Like, Anyone yeah. you can name that you saw and were Somebody like, that's about in trouble blow. right now, Lizzo. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing Lizzo perform Juice on uh <laughs> on Fallon, like doing the rehearsal and then doing the actual uh, show. That's so and cool. And I remember seeing her and I'd be like, oh, she's about to blow yeah. up. And she was all about positive body, <laughs> yeah. positivity. All that. All like pro being yeah. you is yeah. great. And now all these allegations are coming out. Yep, it's, it's rough. Nothing's real, man. Nothing's real, man. <laughs> Nothing is real. Next thing you're gonna tell me is wrestling's predetermined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you watch? Uh, on Summer Saturday? Slam. Yeah, I watched um, this last night. I watched a little bit. I had a, I was uh, I had a show, but then I'm I'm in the middle of the Cody oh, okay. Brock Lesnar match. match. It's pretty good so far. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, I like the Ricochet Logan Paul match. Yeah, that Logan Paul man, dude, love him or hate him, he can wrestle. Oh, he can wrestle, and he's 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 exactly like. He's a perfect WWE person, honestly. He's charismatic. Yeah, he's charismatic, and it's like you already are irked by him in real life. Yes, so it's perfect. So he can just lean into that mm -hmm. in wrestling, which is the exact place you should do it. We got we got to go character. see wrestling together. Oh, dude, I'm down. Next time WWE's in town, I'll get the tickets. Yeah. I got a good hookup, <laughs> and we will go. And it is so fun. Yeah, it's dude. way more fun when the tickets are free. So. Oh, of course. Yeah. But even if we have to pay, it'll still be a good yeah, time. Yeah, it'll be a good time. I'm trying to like. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how I can get to because Mania is in Philly, which is only oh, two hours go. away. So I'm trying to figure out a way to go. Let's go, dude. I want to go to Philly. Yeah. Well, my friend uh, who's a professional wrestler is having a baby in December. Oh, wow. So, but maybe that means uh, Mania return. Maybe. That'd who be knows? Cool. That'd who knows? Who cool. knows? Yeah. We'll, we'll see. But I also really enjoy going to a lot of the indie shows. Yeah, right. Like Wrestle Pro in New Jersey is a great promotion. Right. And they get great, act, like, great guys come through. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been to an indie one in like... Oh, they're so fun, because you can yeah. sit so close, and it's like the wrestlers kind of just mingle and hang out. Right. But it's a good time. It's a great time. I try to... I, it's so funny, because sometimes I'll have people with me, like, like I had a friend in town uh, this past weekend, so I was uh, performing at Gotham, mm -hmm. but the manager there also loves wrestling. Yeah. And so what I did is, like, I brought my laptop and hooked it up to the TV, so, you know, we could watch some. Wait, was James there too? Madden? James was there. Because he was telling me, I was, yeah. I was watching the green room at yeah, Gotham. Yeah. I was like, what? They were yeah. showing it in the green room? Yeah, James was there. So, I, I, you know, I bring up the I bring the hookup for it. That's and, amazing. Um, but my friend that was with me, you know, they were like, you know, they were like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to be here watching wrestling with you on. Mm -hmm. But by the end of it, they were like, this is great. Like, this I mean, is, they're like, I'm really into this. I did not expect to be so into this. Before the, bra and I know we're losing people who don't watch wrestling, yeah. but just, just hear me out because the storytelling aspect of it, yeah. it is mind blowing. The bloodline, first of all, I haven't gotten to that match yet, Yeah. but the the story, the video, they the package before the Lesnar Cody match yes. was like set to music sure. and it was just like beautiful storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. And I know we're gonna get a lot of shit for this, but listen. Yeah. <laughs> they're great at they're it's great so at good. like promoting a fight. Like yeah. even if you didn't watch, you know, week to week, mm -hmm. you would see the like. And I don't. Yeah. Watch week to week. But you can still watch like the three to four minute video package and be like, "Yo, this is crazy!" Yeah. Because like, it's like yeah. all the highlights of like the feud. And you're like, it's so this fun is about to be dope. Because they do what they're focusing on now, which I, I'm a huge fan of, is this like long term like. Mm -hmm. They'll do like these little, like sometimes they have little programs where like I feud with Jordan yeah. for like two weeks and then we finish it squash and it's done and move on to someone else. But now they're doing like these really like year long storylines. Yeah. It's like real years. television. Like, yeah. Like straight up television where it's like, oh yeah, this storyline takes a, takes a while to go. Uh, it's not now. It's, it's like our Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, now here's a question. Would you ever write for the WWE? <sighs> That's a hard one. Maybe. I don't know. I hear mixed things about it. I think it would be fun to try for a couple months. Just yeah. because like I hear it's such a grind. Right. And it's just terrible hours. Yes. But now that Vince is like semi-gone, it yeah. might be easier. Maybe so. It might be. Yeah. 
Yeah, it would be interesting to, to try it out and then just also be there and like be a part of it. I would write for it like for like the four months uh, before and after Mania. So oh, I could just yeah, go to Mania. Yeah, yes, totally. <laughs> and then and yeah. then be out and be like, all right, I did it. It would be fun. I think you have to sign a bunch of NDAs. Oh, yeah. But um, it would be a, be a good experience yeah. just to see how it, how the sausage is made. Yeah, why Although not? it might completely destroy your love for the business as well. Maybe so. Who yeah. knows? Sometimes it does do that when you get too close. That is true. That is true. What would people uh, be surprised to know about you? Ooh, that's a good question. Was there something that you like that might throw people off collect uh, anything wrestling always does surprise people that you know i like that um taught myself guitar in pandemic that oh, was that's fun. cool yeah that's become like a what new can obsession. you play um i can play stuff like i don't know like blackbird and uh you know the beatles song yeah. or whatever and like some john mayer stuff oh, here sick. and there Dude, like, I, I taught myself guitar when i was working on cruise ships because i get so freaking bored right yeah and I, I learned like green day right yeah like it's one of the easier songs good ready like yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's a fun hobby for sure mm -hmm. um yeah you know i play like you know some funk stuff or whatever um but yeah it's like it's a nice way to have like some creative downtime outside of stand-up comedy you know yeah absolutely you're a big music guy right yeah like you collect vinyl i do yeah i have like over 100 records whoa in my house um i just bought uh yesterday i picked up the jackson's destiny album and then wow. aretha franklin's young gifted and black all like first pressings mm -hmm. yeah wow. yeah the, actually the jackson's uh pressing was a promo copy whoa so it was like not even for sale what do you get them on ebay or like where do you get these no i was just in a record store digging and they just is it and it was it like how much is the record like that i wouldn't even know uh that was only like 15 bucks so they might not have known what they had kind of thing no they definitely knew they oh, definitely okay. knew but um it's, it seems like you could get a lot more for that if you sold it yeah i think it was like out of like a dj's collection or whatever mm. but it was still in like good shape um but also it's also fun like having vinyl and like finding little touches in there that you wouldn't have like from just you know streaming it or whatever like yeah. there was a cool like photo inside of it of the yeah Jacksons i miss that kind of i miss having like a hard copy of stuff sometimes yeah. Yeah. i mean it's good because I, I don't like clutter and i just right. i just collect stuff yeah but yeah i, I do miss that yeah uh, most nine times out of ten i don't like i'm the same way it's like mm -hmm. i don't want to have like too much stuff around but vinyl for whatever reason i was like oh this will be a fun once i moved to brooklyn i was like well i can't live in brooklyn and not have a vinyl yeah, they'll collection kick you out of brooklyn and a record player it's like that's like having a visa here yeah exactly so uh but yeah like anything else like video game wise or whatever it's like all digital i don't mm -hmm. want to have copies of it around yeah but it's just fun to have like a record it's like a it's like a whole ritual to do yeah, it wait. yeah do um oh this is nice sudden that's such a nice area here in flatbush yeah yeah it's a nice nice far town you know it's a good day it's a, yeah it's beautiful out. do you have spots tonight no i'm off tonight oh good for you yeah i'm chilling i'm chilling i got one long set at New York Comedy Club. Yeah. 30 minutes. Oh, I'm wow. opening for Norman. Oh, cool. So, and, uh. Nice. And, uh. Is he no doing one... like a, like a resident or like Mark Norman test out new jokes kind of deal? He's kind of working on his new hour. Okay. Um, so, I was with him on the road last week and it's really coming together quite yeah. nicely. Yeah. But he just put out a Netflix special. So, right. he's got like 25 minutes of really gold, like. Yeah polished doesn't need any more work and then like the rest the last 30 yeah i guess he's just out. kind of figuring out but it, it's a process it doesn't it takes a lot of time yeah joey fatone's coming tonight really yeah he, oh, he wow. messaged me he's like hey are you gonna be in the i'm gonna be in the city on monday are you performing anywhere oh wow i'm like yeah dude come come check me out my friend and i went down a uh old like music video rabbit hole this past weekend and some of it included in sync. Oh, I love that. Which one did you watch? Uh, a bunch of them, honestly. Oh, okay. Watch Pop and Pop was funny you know. because Joey Fatone. This is fun. Uh huh. In the Pop music video, yeah. While filming that, injured his leg. Oh, really? And so their choreographer, vaguely uh, Wade Robson, yeah. vaguely looked like Joey Fatone. So he's oh, in hilarious. all the group shots. No way. Yep. So if you rewatch that, all the group shots where they're dancing, yeah. it's, if you pause it, it's not Joy Fatone in the music video. Oh, but wow. they do close-up shots of him, but he's sitting down because he couldn't walk. Oh, that's right. He was sitting down. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, we were having an argument over Backstreet versus NSYNC. Okay, and who won? I mean, 
for me, I'm in sync. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Same, same, same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like, do like the Backstreet Boys, though, too. Yeah, but I think, the, you know, in sync has uh, bigger videos, you know, yeah, more yeah. like memorable videos. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know? I mean, you really can't beat that um, No Strings Attached album. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. It's, it's a, a banger. classic. Yeah, it's a banger. So I was like, I was like, you don't know one Backstreet Boy dance move, like <laughs> right? You don't. They're, you really don't. Yeah. They didn't have the dancing down like yeah. like Insync did. It is funny though to go back and watch some of those videos and see like choreography then compared to today. Oh yeah. Because now you know these kids on TikTok. Well, and you can't compare them with killer. like the Korean kids. Those right, those yeah. like K-pop guys yeah. can dance like. Of course. Like insane. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, but you see it now. I'm just like, dang, y'all get y'all. Y'all can't keep up with today's <laughs> standards. You, People will be pulling out incredible choreography just in their living room. Have you ever gone back and watched Julia Stiles and Save the Last Dance? Because that <laughs> yeah, like cool like hip hop <laughs> dance break she did yeah, is bad. awful. Yeah. Once you if you watch it now, you're like, what is she yeah, doing? Right. Yeah. That's why Scary Movie Two made fun of it so hard. It's so, oh, that's right. They did. But <laughs> yeah. it, even even still, it's still fun to look back. Oh, my God. right. It's cringy. Yeah. Speaking it's, of cringe, it's pretty bad. It is pretty bad. So Jordan, what are you working on now? Um, just these jokes, man. I'm putting up, you know, as much as I can online. I'm actually going to release um, the album that I recorded and released in 2020. I never released the video footage of it. Oh, wow. You know, like the, the video special yeah. of it. So I'm going to put that up on YouTube soon. Nice. Um, and other than that, I'm just, you know, touring as usual, you know, coming to Austin and uh, Houston and Philly and Seattle and all these places. So it's going to be a good time. You know? Well, make sure to check Jordan out on the road yeah. at Jordan Fisher. Yes, sir. You got to spell it. Yeah, it's uh, J O U R D A I N F I S H E R. That's right. Yeah. Don't miss your chance to see him on the road. He's hilarious, extremely funny, a cool dude. Yeah. Jordan, thanks so much for doing yeah, this. Yeah, man. Talkie walkie.